Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in San Francisco for Amazon Web Services Summit, AWS Summit. That's the hashtag. Go on Twitter, go to crowdchat.net slash AWS Summit. We're holding a special crowd chat documenting the conversation, recording every tweet in that room, join that community. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm joined with my co-host, Jeff Frick, filling in for Dave Vellante. Uh, Jeff, always hard to fill in for Dave Vellante. Um, who's here, uh, you got the tie on though for Dave. <laughs> you got the tie for Dave. It doesn't look good on you, I know you're from California. And Ariel, Ariel Kelman, worldwide marketing lead, head of worldwide marketing for Amazon. Welcome back to theCUBE. Yep, thanks for having me. You were here, last, here. last time at reInvent. Um, Kind of markets itself, the company, right? I mean, you just trot the features out there on stage and keep on pushing new code. Yeah, what we, what we try and do <laughs> you is... Just lean back yeah. and just like, customers, <laughs> testimonials, I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, we try and just focusing on educating our customers about what our services are doing, how customers are using them, which is something they ask for a lot, and then, you know, go pretty light on the marketing. Um, most technical people don't like to be marketed to, and they find our approach quite refreshing. And when you're in the lead, you don't need to really worry about too much flair. You got some meat on the bone. You got great use cases, you got great technology, and a market lead uh, in cloud, and you're forging in a new territory. So there is a new element of the enterprise now coming in where you guys are being attacked, certainly in the market. Google <laughs> had some moves this week. I see, you know, IBM's doing HP, Oracle, the list just goes on and on. So, okay, those guys are kind of putting up the seawall for the big innovation way that you guys have built. Mm -hmm. The question is, will it last? And, and so there is people really moving quickly to Amazon. The, customer uptake is pretty comprehensive. Yeah. So I'd say it's mainstream. So now as you go in the enterprise, you got to do some messaging, right? You got to you got to have the innovation message. So what is the core opportunity for you there in the well, enterprise? There's a couple things in the enterprise. I think, you know, first of all, we're helping people save money. We have uh, organizations like Dow Jones that predict they're going to save over 100 million dollars uh, essentially by shutting down data centers and moving more of their infrastructure to the cloud. But I, I think the real interesting part is how we make these companies more innovative. That if we can lower the cost of using technology to roll out their new projects, then essentially we take the cost of experimentation and have it almost approach zero. So then now, if you want to try something new, the cost of failure aren't so high that they prevent people from sticking their neck out of the line and trying new things. And so what we see in a lot of these companies that are adopting us more heavily, their culture's changing. Their employees are, are excited about trying things because when they try something out, the cost of failure is a fraction of what it was before they don't have to buy servers, they don't have to buy all this equipment, get data center space. They can try something quickly. And if it works, great, they expand. If not, they don't have to live with all the expense that they tried it out. So it's increasing the pace of innovation and also allowing more people in the company to be able to try new things that involve technology because we're eliminating these gatekeepers where before, if you had a project, required a lot of money, a lot of infrastructure, think of all the committees you have to go to, all the justifications. But if anyone can go spin up these resources with self-service, totally changes the dynamics of who can innovate. Yeah, I mean, the whole try before you buy, the puppy dog clothes, as they used to say in the sales tactics, is let me try it before you buy it. Yeah. Shadow IT has legitimized the fact that for very little cost and collateral damage, as Andy talks about, you can get something up and running pretty quickly. So the old, ah, that'll never work comment, that's the killer phrase of right. innovation, right. gets eliminated. Because, no, no, I already tried it, here's the numbers. Is that, well, is that a big part of it, too? I mean, a little bit. I mean, it's almost like we need a new term. There, there's, you know, people talk about shadow IT, and, and the, what we typically see is that um, once you give the CIO the keys to the cloud infrastructure and you set up a governance approach where you can decide what people can do, how much money they can spend, what things they can try, um, then you get the best of both worlds. You still have a vetted platform from a security perspective, you have governance controls to ensure people are doing the right thing, but then IT doesn't have to say no. And it's, oh sorry, you got to wait in line, you got to wait till next year. Um, so that is the new model that we're seeing, where you're seeing developers distributed across the organization and smaller official IT departments, but more people doing IT stuff in the company because everyone can have access to infrastructure when they go big on cloud, especially with AWS. And are they getting it? Are the corporate IT guys getting it that this is a good thing for them and they can leverage this to actually add more value in the company and enable more, at the end of the day, more IT usage? Yeah, absolutely. The companies that we talk to, look, they got a lot of questions. If you're a big organization, you want to know if we can meet your security requirements, your compliance requirements. Can you run, the same they'll ask us, well look, we want to do two things. We want to run the software in the last 20 years in the cloud. Can you help us with that? And then, we want to build these new cloud native applications so we can be as agile and efficient as some of these new internet startups that now we're competing with. And so we spent a lot of time with them to talk through what they should do first, 
how they should think about it, what apps make sense to run on us, and, and you know, more importantly, what the sequence is. What should they do first? Let's ask us, like, we want to go. We've, we've played around, we've tested, we've had lots of developers using this for years, but now we want to go big on having a material percentage of our infrastructure in the cloud so we can fundamentally change how IT adds value to the business. And like, those are the conversations we love having with customers. Errol, I want to ask you about just the show vibe. Just to check this out, check the box on the interview here, because I want to make sure people can understand. Amazon reinvents your mega show. That's your global conference. And well, well, why don't you just explain? Explain reinvent sure. versus the these summits. Sure. So the AWS summits, um, it's our free one-day event uh, that we do, maybe like 14, 15 around the world. It's two purposes. One, for people that are new to AWS, they can come in one day, get an overview of what it's about, how to use it, and get inspired on what they can do with it. And then for our existing customers who are heavy users, they get an update on what's new, which may sound kind of tactical, but we release a you lot of new stuff, right? Stuff. And so that's one of my biggest challenges. That, that like, chart is how do we make sure that people know what all the new stuff is? They right. come here for one day, go to our keynote, go to a bunch of breakout sessions, do some training, and they get ramped up on everything we've done in the past year. And speaking of which, so we had you on last year, and we were here, so what's been the big change from 2013 to 2014? I mean, we've had a lot of new services that we've released. We're going to new areas. You think about Amazon Workspaces, it's more of an IT business application, right? Um, what you saw our demo today wasn't people coding, it was someone actually as an end user using um, a virtual desktop on their iPad, on their computer, and so there are different types of applications, but we're, we're still going after that same goal, which is to allow uh, these enterprise IT organizations to take advantage of the cloud with more workloads. Essentially, the larger of a percentage of their projects that they're doing that we can help them with, the happier they are with the relationship. Right. And the test, the test dev conversation seems to have simmered down quite a bit. Where it seemed like last year that was, you know, that was everybody's kind of testing waters. That's where you had initial traction, the initial shadow IT, and that that seems to really have died down in terms I, of. I mean, of I think it's volume. kind of gone mainstream or whatever is past mainstream. Where right, right. you know, it's if you're a big done, SAP right. shop and your developers don't have their own SAP development environments, you're kind of, you're behind the curve. Same for Oracle, for SharePoint. I mean, it, that's the new standard. Um, and so people don't talk about it as much because they're already doing it. Right. It's, it's uh, you know, the idea of, well, you know, what are the big bets? Um, you know, what should we use it for next? Should I do big data analytics using um, like our Redshift uh, product? Or should I build new high-scale web applications? Should this be my mobile infrastructure? That, that's where more of the conversation is coming on now. Harry, I want to ask you about marketing kind of 101 you know, take me through the business school level of marketing relative to your vision of Amazon and how the company's operating. Obviously, Andy sets the tone up on stage, uh, very customer centric. We hear all the people on Amazon talk about, hey, we listen to the customer. They, uh, so they're tight on the messaging. They're probably tight on the messaging. <coughs> but you know, you start to see you know, tweets on the wild emerge like uh, the new strategy for Amazon is price reduction as a service. You know, it's, it's like, and so you're seeing right. these messages come out. So is that, the, is that your plan? to message um, just the price reduction, to show the, the, the continual improvement in terms of cost reductions and improvements in innovation and capability, and just kind of be humble. So, so what, what our marketing organization is trying to do is to educate our customers in the easiest and most scalable way about what our services do, what are the best practices, how can they can use them, and how they can save money. And you saw Andy talk about that a little bit earlier. We want our customers to feel like they're spending the least amount of money they need with us because we want a long-term relationship. And on price reductions, I mean, it's probably one of the top three or four most boring parts of marketing at AWS because every service team is trying to um, relentlessly take costs out of uh, their services, and when they get to a certain point, we pass those cost savings along to customers. It's kind of like clockwork. Is that, an We've done 42 is, that an, of them. is that an internal metric for you guys? Are you guys all under pressure or mandated? That's just the DNA of the company. Let's get the cost out. Let's abstract away cost and complexity. I say there's some bragging rights, a little competition between the teams. How many price reductions have you done? Yeah. I mean, it's a sign that they're being efficient and that they're making customers happy. It's a great metric. I yeah. mean, I mean, price reduction and, and also feature increase. So yeah. again, EC2 now with Flash. You start to see some new stuff hit the table. Yeah, that's part of the plan, right? I mean, Price reductions our, and more functionality. Right. So, I mean, the, the mo one of the most important parts of our overall strategy is to constantly innovate, both on building new services that let people run more things in the cloud, but then also adding new functionality based on feedback we get from our customers. We like to release services relatively early, um, versus sitting in an ivory tower trying to figure out what the perfect feature set is. We'll get this out early 
uh, get feedback from customers because you know we're often surprised what people do with these services, <laughs> and uh, you know they take on a life of their own. But ultimately, that's how we get the best. You guys um, are results. you guys are like the big gorilla in the in the industry. But I, I was talking to someone last night at a, a VIP event in San Francisco. All these CEO venture capitalists, oh, Amazon, they loaded with money. You know, like I'm like I, guys, they're like a lean startup. So I, it, that's pretty much the case. We validated and talked to some folks. You guys are like a startup. I mean, you're huge, you've got great resources, yeah. but it's not like you're like spending money, throwing it around. You guys are very tight on the, num I mean, I mean, the yeah. budgets. You don't like just throwing around yeah. money. If, if you, you want to know about Amazon's culture, just type into Google Amazon leadership principles. And there's about, uh, is it about a dozen or so core values. One of them is frugality. It's, it's kind of you know part of how we operate the company. And, believe, and what it means is that we only spend money on things that are useful to our customers. And that's a real good grounding. I mean, you see, we don't have 80 foot tall posters of our products or our executives here. You know, we spend the time on, you know, computers for people to do training. And when we're, you know, planning events, we want to have everything focused on stuff that's useful to customers. And we build the service too. We try and be relentless in driving costs out of our suppliers so we can pass on those costs to these customers. And it's just, you know, when you, um, when you operate in a frugal fashion where you really think about costs, you end up being scrappier and you end up innovating more. It sends a good signal too to your customer base because it's like a, probably a laundry list of things that you guys have laid out that you still need to do and do to innovate. So yeah, it's nice. exactly. If you waste money on, on you know, weirdness, people are say, hey, wait a minute, why aren't they spending that energy on building new stuff? Exactly. Like uh, we didn't tent Howard Street and close off the road to have a rock concert. Yeah. Uh, it rained on that. It rained yeah. On but that what you do is you help companies. I mean, we yeah. have our CrowdChat app. You've seen that. We built that all on Amazon. Would not yeah. be possible without it. We hear testimonial after testimonial. Customers saying, "Hey, Amazon would have been 15 people minimum just to actually manage the gear on an ops side without Amazon." So the, I mean, yeah. it's just pretty massive. So, so with that, I got to ask you the marketing question: Is how do you roll up all that goodwill, the plutonium of this great, great? case study data you have, I mean, referenceability, it's not a well, problem. Well, I mean, the number one marketing strategy we have is let our customers do the marketing for us. So, I mean, part of why we do these events is to let our customers and people who are not customers yet interact with each other. And even when we have a reception, you know, one of the, the best marketing strategies, if you have a product that people like, is you combine your customers, your prospects, and alcohol. And then they, you let them talk. Right. You have them ask questions, and, and that's how you get the real, like, okay, you don't want to believe our salespeople? Fine. Talk to our customers and really get a sense of what's going on. All right. um, there's too much smoke and mirrors with these old guard hardware and software companies. We're much more open, much more transparent um, because we believe in our, in our products and they're available for anyone anytime. It's almost like it's not even worth making up things that aren't true because yeah. anyone in the world can evaluate any of our services anytime they want. It's almost boringly, boringly good. And you hear Andy talking about, well, we did this for that, we did that for that. It was like a laundry list. I was listening to the keynote. I'm like, okay, he's going to stop now. Yeah. No, I'm just like, it's more, more just dropping, dropping more and more feature releases. Um, so obviously, you guys are shipping more product. You're reducing the prices. We don't actually ship anything. I mean, push code. We launch services, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You push code in the cloud. Turning yes. on. We can create yeah. a box for you. And you ship that. <laughs> ship There'll be nothing in it. Ship means, you know, send. Yeah, send, to the, send to the cloud. <laughs> Um, but that's the DevOps culture. The DevOps culture is to be scrappy, but think differently. So you guys are thinking differently. But I got to ask you, how are you thinking differently? Because it's clear an ecosystem is developing around you. And yep. that's something that you do have to nurture. You have to invest. It's a community. And you're helping them as business partners now. Yep. Not just customers. Your customer yep. base now expands to partners. Yeah. How do you balance it? Still same philosophy? What tweaks have you made to your job and an organization yeah. based upon the tsunami of uh, ecosystem growth? Yeah, I mean, our customer ecosystem is really important to our strategy and to our customers. I mean, the way we think about it is, A, um, cloud's new and people are going to need help. So from consulting firms, systems integrators, managed service providers, which is a really fast growing space, we want to make sure that when our customers want to bet big on AWS, there are those trusted people with certified engineers who can help them, um, either on a short-term or long-term basis. And then on the technology partner, ISV side, we spent a lot of time making sure that we work collaboratively with these companies to pre-certify uh, sort of these applications to run on AWS, and then we create pre-configured versions of them that run on our marketplace, where our customers can browse through a catalog of software pre-configured to run in AWS they can install with one click of the button, and then it just shows up on their AWS bill. So we're trying to make it a real lot easier for people to use a lot of these um, partners' technology. And you know what? We're not going to come out with everything. You know, we like the creativity of our partners. The customers like to know if they if they bet on AWS and they say, huh, 
you know, I wonder if you know there's some good NoSQL databases that run on AWS. Oh, there's Mongo, there's Cassandra, and whatever space you pick, there may be something we offer, and there may be four or five um, other solutions from our partners. We love that choice because that's what customers ask us for. Well, congratulations on all your success. Now, and my final question for you is really my, probably the hardest question, and you can answer it or not answer it. Um, obviously, the competitive landscape has significantly increased the heat in the kitchen around you guys. For a while, you were uncontested. Yeah, some people kind of picking ankle biting around Amazon's you know leadership. Yeah. But now you got some pretty big players. You got IBM, HP, Oracle, Google, EMC, Pivotal, VMware, Gunning, Rackspace, Trip with OpenStack. All this stuff's kind of going around. I know you don't focus on competition and you focus on the customer. We've heard that before. But like, you got to think about that. That's going to put some pressure. How is that affecting you guys? I see you're mindful of it. Are you guys doing anything different I've, to address it? I've never seen a market before where it wasn't healthy for both the leader and for the customers to have competition. And we've always expected this to be a market that would have multiple vendors. When you look at our, every other technology uh, space that was new and became large, there's multiple vendors and it, you know, it enhances innovation, keeps people honest, it's a good thing. So that, the final question then is, what will you tell the folks out there who are watching? Is Amazon Enterprise ready? Um, what's going on right now? This event, you got the big announcements. Give them a recap of what you guys did today and comment on the, on the Amazon is enterprise ready or the enterprise may be ready, not ready for the yeah, Amazon. Well, so how do you respond <laughs> to all that FUD out there? Yeah, I mean, that was a question people asked a lot about us in the enterprise three, four years ago. I think we've invested a, a pretty big deal of our R&D over the past four or five years on just maniacally going through all these enterprise features. I mean. If you look at Gartner's Magic Quadrant for Infrastructure and Service, which is 100% designed for enterprise decision makers, we're with a far and away leader, uh, and um, you know we mark off their checklist pretty well. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're really becoming the safe choice for IT managers in large organizations, large enterprises, large government agencies. Um, I mean, my biggest point of advice is uh, to take a look at our website. You know, we're constantly coming out with new services, and if you haven't looked at us recently. I bet you're going to go there and find some things that you didn't know ran on us, and you'll get some ideas about new projects, new workloads that you can run in the cloud. Okay, final word on reInvent to now. Three major things were announced, Kinesis, AppStream, and Workspaces. Uh, are you happy with what's happened since then and now? Mm -hmm. Give us a quick uh, a feeling from you. Yeah, I mean, the, the, uh, we did uh, private beta for all three of them. We had a lot of participation. Uh, we showed in the keynote some of the the real creative applications people are building with AppStream where they're streaming very graphically intensive applications out to a variety of devices, really making it easier for developers. Workspaces, the, the interest, I, I've never seen a product like this before, um, where the customers in the private beta are just so excited about giving us new features, talking about how we can make it better. Um, tons and tons of energy, tons of excitement. And, and Kinesis is one of these things where, you know, we didn't know what to expect. I mean, it's, it's uh, a, a real-time analytics service to ingest massive amounts of data, and you can build all kinds of apps on top of it. And I think uh, one of the things we talked about today uh, was a gaming company, Supercell, that makes Clash of Clans, to take all the clickstream and usage data of their application to figure out all these intelligent uh, in-game offers and how to make their games more efficient and more fun. And uh, that's the best part, is when we can come out with technology that is pretty broad and can be used for a lot of things, and then we let the customers be creative and we can see what they do. And then they do. Yeah, then they do. Let <laughs> me tell you. Luckily, they share with us. it's not general yeah. anymore, right? Ariel hey, Kelman, you actually have the hardest and easiest job in the world kind of <laughs> at the same time. One is you just have great customers. You have the sizzle and the steak, as we say, meat on the bone. Um, great product mix. You guys are introducing a lot of stuff. We hear prices dropping and functionality increasing. And innovation happening at the same time is actually quite an amazing thing. So we're really impressed. Again, we're a happy customer with CrowdChat. Thanks for coming on theCUBE right. again, appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. This is theCUBE, this is what we do. We go out to the events, we go where the action is, and the action is at Amazon Web Services Summit in San Francisco. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.